It is commonly understood in the recorded history of ancient civilizations that have graced the earth that their era was extremely primitive, and they had no technology compared to the present era in which we live. However, mentioning ancient Egyptian civilization, we find that some of the strangest buildings and amazing structures were built thousands of years ago, the secret and purpose of which remain a huge puzzle facing scientists around the world. Imagine if I told you that in those ancient times, there were people who could build buildings with precision we can't replicate today, even with all our knowledge and technology. A precision akin to, and even surpassing, the laser precision we use in industry today. Not just that, it's very likely that these people used electricity as we know it today to light their streets and homes. This unknown ancient civilization that lived in Egypt disappeared suddenly, leaving no knowledge or advancements to the generations that followed, as if their traces were suddenly erased from the face of the earth without any logical or understandable reason. Prepare yourself for the many shocks in today's episode, and join me to explore the forbidden story of modern archaeology, and together we will uncover the secrets of the lost Egyptian civilization that have been hidden for thousands of years. If you like mysterious topics like this one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we will discuss topics you'll hear for the first time, and they will literally amaze you. Please support us with a like and share the video so it reaches more people. Welcome to the channel. This is a new topic from Endless Enigmas. In the first part of this episode, we talked about amazing scientific and archaeological discoveries, suggesting that the Egyptian civilization history did not start 5,000 years ago. Rather, its continuous history extends for more than 12,500 full years, with long-lost eras that witnessed the construction of some of the greatest technological and engineering miracles in history. Among these technological achievements were the Three Pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid of Khufu. We discussed how they could very possibly be reactors generating electrical energy from air, and they are not merely tombs for the ancient kings of Egypt as traditional archaeology suggests, with scientific evidence, not just mere speculation as we mentioned in the first part. We also discussed that the construction of the pyramids and the Sphinx dates back to 10,500 BC, during the rainy epoch that Earth experienced. I will leave a link to the first part in the description. However, there are many more astonishing things that happened in Egypt, all indicating that there was once an advanced, technologically sophisticated civilization on this land. They built and designed engineering and technological wonders that no one can replicate to this day. For instance, on the obelisk of Thutmose III, scientists found a strange sentence engraved, saying, Its peak is of gold, and it illuminated with its beauty and prevailed. For a very long time, no one knew the meaning of this sentence why it was written this way, or its purpose. However, recent scientific discoveries and research have revealed that the secret behind this sentence might be much stranger than you can imagine. See, my friend, the truth is that ancient Egyptian obelisks, like the obelisk of Thutmose III, may be one of the most important and mysterious technological achievements that to this day in the modern age baffle the entire world and no one knows how they were constructed in this manner. Why, you may ask? I'll tell you because these obelisks, during their creation and construction, underwent extremely difficult stages that any civilization would struggle to execute, even with our current technology, let alone the technology available thousands of years ago. The carving, transport, installation, and erection of these obelisks were truly astonishing beyond description, to the extent that all experts who studied them over the ages were amazed and said it's impossible to execute them this way with primitive tools, and the only way to achieve this level of extreme precision is by using lasers. The idea here is that most or nearly all of these obelisks are made from the material we discussed in the previous part, which is red granite, containing quartz as its primary chemical component. As you know, Materials and elements differ physically based on their hardness and their ability to affect others. 
and red granite with its contained quartz is considered one of the hardest known stones on the planet. Imagine if I told you that according to historical and archaeological knowledge, and based on studies done in books and references, the accepted narrative is that the constructors of these obelisks used carving and cutting tools made from copper and bronze, both of which aren't even close to the strength and hardness of the quartz found in red granite. So the question then is, how could these people cut rocks this hard with tools made from metals much weaker than them? And of course, it's scientifically impossible to cut them from the base, let alone cut them with this precision, dimensions, and amazing angles. The truth is, the only material that can reach the necessary level of strength and hardness to cut red granite with the required ease is compressed carbon or diamond. However, there still haven't been any diamond tools found at or around the construction sites of these obelisks. Even more astonishing is that since these obelisks are made of red granite containing quartz, they could also generate electricity when subjected to pressure, exactly as we said could happen in the Great Pyramid in the previous episode. This brings us back to the phrase written on the obelisk of Ramses III. Its peak is of gold, and it illuminated with its beauty and prevailed. Could it be possible that these obelisks were actually more like lighting poles in this lost era of ancient Egypt? Imagine people walking on the street among the obelisks, while their tips are lit with electrical current from an unknown source. And what's even stranger is one of the biggest mysteries facing Egyptology to this day, the mystery of the Serapium sarcophagi. Look, dear viewer, somewhere in the desert of Saqqara, Egypt, there exists an archaeological site named the Serapium Temple. This was discovered by the Egyptologist Auguste Mariette, in 1848. Its recorded history, mentioned in references, dates back to the reign of Pharaoh Amenhotep III from the 18th dynasty who lived in the 13th century BC, and until here there is no problem. However, what is fascinating is that this temple contains around 26 sarcophagi carved from extremely strong and incredibly heavy stones, such as red granite, black granite, basalt, schist, and quartz, to the extent that the weight of one sarcophagus can reach about 100 tons approximately. If you don't understand this weight, let me tell you that moving just one of these sarcophagi would require about 500 strong men. So, how were these sarcophagi brought into the narrow passages inside the temple? What's even more astonishing is that all these sarcophagi are not cut from stones. They are carved, meaning a rock mass was sculpted, and again, let me tell you that it's scientifically impossible to carve or cut these rocks using the tools available at that time. Besides, the angles and precision of the carving are so astonishing that it is challenging to achieve them in our current era, even with the use of lasers. But that's not all. What's coming is even stranger. The corridors of this temple itself are about 400 meter long and are carved into the heart of the Saqqara Plateau rock, not made amidst the desert sands. The tunnels are underground, accessed by descending stairs. If you look at the map of the tunnels below, you will find many branches in the main tunnel, and these branches have cavities where the sarcophagi are placed. So, how did they get them there in the first place, and drag them all this distance in this narrow corridor with these gigantic weights? Notice that I am telling you they needed 500 people just to push the sarcophagus, so where were all these people standing? Besides, the main corridor is carved in a straight line, so the question is, how was it carved this way? And the distance of about 400 meter inside the mountain itself, without any light source. How does the sun enter a 400 meter tunnel inside the mountain? And how did they carve all this distance and remove all the debris without being able to see in the first place? If we say that the light source was torches, let me tell you that there are no traces of torches on the tunnel walls. Besides, if they were using torches at this depth, they would have suffocated from the heat, smoke, and lack of air. Moreover, carving a tunnel like this in our current era is difficult, even with modern equipment and heavy rock-breaking machines, so how did they carve it more than 3,000 years ago with their hands and primitive tools? And you know what's even stranger and might actually scare you if you think about it? is that in the heart of one of the corridors inside this tunnel, 
One of the cavities that's supposed to have a sarcophagus in it is empty, and the sarcophagus is placed outside in the main corridor, as if those who were building this place experienced something sudden that made them leave everything they were doing and vanish completely as if they never existed. These people could indeed have been part of an advanced civilization that lived in Egypt thousands of years before even the recorded and known history of ancient Egyptian civilization. Unfortunately, they did not get to record their knowledge and civilization and pass it to the subsequent generations, probably because a sudden catastrophic event occurred that erased them and all their knowledge and sciences from the face of the earth. So, do you wonder what could be the nature of the sudden catastrophic event that might have caused such an occurrence? If this assumption is indeed true, then what could cause the disappearance of an entire chapter from the chapters of civilizations that have passed on Earth in this way? This is an important topic, and the answer to it will indeed be astonishing. Therefore, we will discuss it in upcoming episodes where you will learn things stranger than everything that has preceded. Leave me your comment and opinion on all that you have heard in the comments, and as usual, I will leave you the sources under the video in the description. And if you are interested in mysterious topics like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow new topics. And please like and share the video, as this will reach a larger number of people. I'll see you in a new journey stranger than everything that has passed. Peace.